Hello and welcome to another Whiteboard Training Friday. Today we're talking about the medical science liaison position. This is number two of 40 of the top 40 careers for PhDs. So if you're a PhD looking for a job, this is a great job to consider, especially if you're looking for one of the higher paying jobs, a job that allows you to stay close to science, a job that allows you to travel a lot, if that's what you want. Our goal here is to help you understand whether or not this job might be right for you, what it is and what it is not. So number one, what it is not, it is not a as in most countries where medical science liaisons can't sell. Uh, there is a wall between the sales team and the medical science liaisons. The liaisons focus more on the science, the teaching, supporting the drug, building relationships with key opinion leaders or KOLs, which we're going to talk about next. It is not a sales position. In fact, you cannot sell. Number two, no clinical experience is required. This is the, one of the most common questions we get from PhDs. Well, I can't be an MSL because I don't have any clinical experience or I don't have any drug pathway experience. Does not matter. In fact, in our association, we just had somebody with an engineering background get into a top medical science liaison director role at Pfizer. We've had other people get into top roles at Celgene, uh, many of the biggest pharmaceutical companies, many of the biggest CROs in this position um, without any clinical experience whatsoever. Remember, as a PhD, you have a doctor of philosophy. What's philosophy? Knowledge and the ability to ascertain knowledge. You're a doctor of learning. You can learn the drug pathway. You can learn whatever drug or treatment or medical device, the, the supporting material, you can learn that. And you can have the discussions, the high level scientific discussions with key opinion leaders. Who are these key opinion leaders? Let's turn to number three. This is crucial for this role. This is what you'll spend most of your time doing supporting KOLs, again, key opinion leaders. These can be MDs who might be prescribing the drug that you're supporting or the treatment or, again, the medical device. You need to be able to have the high-level clinical, medical, scientific conversations with these people, which is why you as a PhD are being hired into these roles faster than anybody else. It used to be just other MDs or people with uh, pharmacology degrees were hired into this role, but PhDs are being hired into this role faster than anyone else. It's a great job to consider now because you can have these conversations. Now, you might be thinking, oh, I have to be an extrovert or great at dealing with other people. You don't. You can be an introvert. Yes, you have to be able to deal with other people. You have to be able to talk about science, but you can do that. You've been trained to do that as a PhD. You also will be presenting a lot. Some of the presentations, a lot of the presentations could just be one-on-one. -on -one. They could be slightly larger, but this is what you'll be doing in this role. And again, taking the information, the insights you get, the feedback you get from the field, from the key opinion leaders in the field, right? If you go into a hospital and talk to an MD who's pre prescribing the drug that some ph pharmaceutical company produces, you need to take that feedback back to the company producing the drug, drug, the company you work for, and relay those insights. Number four, knowledge of drug timelines. Okay, so you, you will gain, if you don't have it already, you will gain this knowledge as an MSL, uh, whether it's the, the clinical phase, uh, phase timelines, uh, what the clinical trials look like. Uh, you'll understand the production cycle of drug development. It could be treatments, it could be the development of a medical device too. Uh, in many cases, if you're working for a pharmaceutical company, it'll be a drug. Uh, when MSLs become active are more towards when the drug is released, right, and they support the drug afterwards. Uh, you're not doing too much, depends on the role of course, but you're not doing too much before the drug is actually released into the market. So understanding this, reading about it, talking to other MSLs, setting up informational interviews, getting access to a network of MSLs uh, can be very valuable here um, as you're starting to pursue this job option if it's right for you. Number five, high pay, fastest growing. I'm gonna keep coming back to this topic. Uh, in the US, it's the fourth highest paid career uh, for, for getting into that career at, at the entry level, as in if, if it's your first career after a PhD. Uh, many other countries have MSLs. They might call them something different. They might just consider them medical affairs positions or medical associates. Um, either way, it's a very popular position worldwide for PhDs right now. Pays very, very well. Um, and it allows you to not just get uh, a lot of pay, but allows you to uh, build up your network. Again, with KOLs, other people, it gives you experience in a of a wide variety of topics with a wide variety of people. Number six, knowledge of regulation. So we've been talking about this regulatory aspect. So there, a lot of companies will have a medical affairs department. They'll also have a regulatory affairs department. In the U.S., there's something something called the Sunshine Act. This prevents people uh, from essentially uh, 
taking doctors, MDs out to lavish dinners, right? It prevents uh, companies from giving you know kickbacks or whatever else you might call them to MDs to encourage them to buy their drugs. This isn't allowed anymore, which is why the medical science liaison position is so popular because you're in this position where you're almost like a, a professor of the pharmaceutical company talking to uh, the KOLs, the MDs, the other professor type people where you just get to discuss the science freely. You're not worried about making sales and you get to give feedback to the company. Again, it, it's removing that sales component completely so that the MDs are not um, encouraged in ways that uh, might be uh, not, not, not you know below the fray. Uh, encouraged to use a treatment when it's not the best treatment just because they feel obligated to a company who bought them a big dinner or got them a golf course package or whatever. So MSL positions are here to stay. These types of regulations are increasing. Your understanding of these regulations can make you a better jo uh, job candidate for MSL positions. Number seven, KOL, territory, map, ground, rounds. What does this have to do with? If, you, if you're deciding, and maybe you're watching this video, and you think, oh, an MSL career might be right for me, what can you do to make yourself a better candidate? Start going on grand rounds, right? Go to a local hospital. Maybe you're, you're doing research right now uh, at, at a hospital or at a graduate school or institution connected to a hospital. Try to go on grand rounds. Also, start identifying who the key opinion leaders are in your location, or if you're applying to a job, in a different location, identify the KOLs in that location and create what is called a territory map. This is something that you can look up. It's something that we work with our associates on, uh, the associates who want to get into MSL positions. Creating a territory map before you go in for an interview can be very advantageous. So in summary, if you're considering the MSL position, this is out of three stars. Salary, three stars, one of the highest paid positions. Travel, three stars. This could be good or bad for you. You know, if you have a family, you can't travel a lot, might, maybe not the right position for you. You will be doing a lot of travel. It's definitely a field position. Uh, it's an innovation position, more innovation than commercial. You're working with those KOLs, getting feedback uh, from them, from their patients, uh, using, again, the drugs, the treatments, etc. So you're helping innovate new products. You're helping uh, support them when they come out. Uh, slightly less commercial. Uh, uh, it's not, not so much a commercial position. It's not so much a numbers heavy or a writing heavy position. Sure, you need to discuss the science, but you're not gonna be the one crunching a lot of the data. So hopefully this helps you decide on whether or not an MSL position is right for you. If you have questions about this position, please let us know in the comments below. You can also click a link I'm gonna put in the chat box that's gonna take you to our career map that'll help you decide on which career is right for you as a PhD. I'm gonna put that link above this video shortly as soon as the video is done. As always, you can go to phdsgethired.com Put your name and email on that page and we'll send you all of our materials, phdsgethired.com. As always, remember your value as a PhD and start thinking and acting like a successful industry professional.